Welcome everyone to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys debugging. So I'll be going through four tips that I generally use to debug my code and four tips that I think you should start using. So the first tip is going to be using remote versus local. So what, what do I mean by remote? Well, when I play my game and I start, you can see on the top left, we see remote and local. Local is the general thing that I usually play with or that you usually code, right? So anything that you add is local. Remote, if we head over to it, is anything that is happening live. It is essentially what is happening when I actually play the game. So here you can see that the global is here. Now, what is this global? This global is if I go to my project settings and auto load something, I have a global script here. So it gets loaded as a script, right? So you can even see any variables in the inspector that are inside of it. So right now I have health and it's at zero. And what's very useful about this is that I can change it. So now it's 50, right? So one more demonstration. If I add, let's say a node 2D to this world and I play and I head back to the remote, you can now see the node there. So sometimes this is useful to see what is actually going on in your scene, whether you're missing some nodes or whatever is happening, right? So it might be useful to see what the heck is happening with your actual nodes when you're actually playing the game. All right, tip number two is using printing. So let's take a look at some code here. When I play here, or when I look at my code, I have a very simple uh, code that says, uh, basically we're making an array. We're using a function called calculate average, right? So it passes through this function. And essentially we're calculating the average. Now there is a bug here. You might be able to even uh, find it already, but let's take a look, let's print or let's play. We see that the average is 150, but that's not right, right? The, the average is supposed to be, I believe like 30, right? Uh, don't quote me on that, but <clears throat> let's find out together. So the bug is right here. So what is the issue? What's a way to fix this? Well, we can try, uh, let's say printing, uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll print the num so maybe we can print the num here, or we can even print total. So we can find out what the total is uh, throughout the for loop, right? So now if I play, I'll get a bunch of prints here that give me the sum, right? So this is a good way to actually kind of find out what is happening through printing. Now, printing is, is not very good though. Printing is kind of stupid. And generally you don't actually print things uh, in bigger companies, right? Whenever you go to uh, um, a studio, you generally don't print things. Uh, in fact, it's actually very bad practice and it's very much looked down upon. The reason is because if I'm working on a big project together, let's not even say a big project, let's say five people are working on a project together. If I start adding these prints into my game and I push my project onto the main uh, branch, basically, now everyone has the code that I have, right? Well, every time anyone else on my team is testing the game, they're going to see all these prints and they're going to be so confused. They're going to be, what are these prints? They don't know, right? So generally it's not actually good practice to print. Now what we can do, which is very useful, is we can uh, use breakpoints. So if we click right here, you can see a breakpoint. These are breakpoints. Now, how do these work? Essentially they induce an error, not an error per se, but they induce a breakpoint. So now you can see that it shows me the code of the breakpoint. And if I actually close this and I go back to my script, it might be a little nicer like this. So we see our breakpoint and we see the breakpoint on the bottom over here. So the stack trace is actually quite useful. So now what can happen is we can actually use the step info or into uh, and step over. Usually you would use step into. Uh, the difference is you can kind of look at the icon, but essentially uh, step into will go one line at a time. And if there's a function called, we can actually take a look. It will go into the function. So I can click, either you can click F11 or just click the button there. And this will go into the function and go line by line and tell us what is happening. And you can even see over here, the local variables, total and number. We can keep going, keep going, 100, 150, and then it's still 150. So now we can think, okay, well, what went wrong? We got 150, but we didn't divide it by two. So that's how you can debug using breakpoints. It's very useful. Right, so you can even uh, have another breakpoint over here if you'd like, um, one over here and one over here. It really doesn't matter. It, well, it does matter. It's kind of just what you want to do, right? And how you uh, debug your code using uh, breakpoints. All right, now on the topic of breakpoints, that kind of leads us to tip number three, which is assertion. So assertion is, is think of a breakpoint, but a conditional breakpoint. 
So here I have two assertions and one will fail and one will uh, pass. So if I play here, I'm gonna play this scene, it will quote unquote break point or assert on this line. So what is happening? We have player health 100 and player alive is true. Now, if player health is greater than zero and player alive, meaning uh, is true, right? So if you ever ask if something, that generally is asking if it's true or not, uh, then it'll print this gibberish, right? But this will only happen if it fails, essentially. Now here, we're saying, we're creating an inventory full of two objects, right? A sword and a shield. This isn't an actual inventory, but it's just an array. Uh, we're asking the size of the array if it's less than zero. If it is, this will assert and it will quote unquote error, right? So we're inducing a breakpoint or an error. Uh, I, I believe the word that they actually use is error in Godot. If you go into here, it says an error generated. So you're inducing an error based on a condition. So my condition here is if the inventory.size is less than zero. So I believe this should work with most conditions, right? So it says here condition. So as long as that condition gives you some sort of truth or false value, then that condition should work. And then you can print something which is very nice, right? Because if we go to the, uh, oh, sorry, debugger, it says right here, assertion failed, inventory is empty. So this is a very nice way, similar to breakpoints, to debug our code. Now the fourth point that I uh, is a little weird is prevention rather than intervention. Now this might sound maybe counterproductive or annoying, but <clears throat> one of the things I learned as a lifeguard growing up, uh, one of the very first things I had a instructor teach me was we always try to prevent rather than try saving people because, well, one, I'm lazy, and two, it's, I mean, better, right? If we can prevent people from drowning, then we don't have to jump in and save them. So similarly in code and in life, we try to prevent these things. So, you know, use good practice. So for example, when I create an integer, uh, let's say thing is equal to one, instead of saying this, I can create it as an integer, right? Because later on, if I try to convert it or print this as a string, it will give me an error, meaning, hey guys, this it will tell me that this is an integer. You can't print an integer as a string, right? So prevention is a little better than uh, inter intervention, right? R rather than the cure. So, uh, in this topic, it's a little harder to give big solid tips because, you know, the best thing I would just say is keep your files organized, um, keep things tidy, right? Your code tidy and keep to best practices in code. Uh, so those are my four tips in debugging. Hopefully this helps and hopefully you can debug your code a little nicer uh, in the future. And in the future, if you ever pop into my Discord and don't know how to debug, I will reference you this video because I think hopefully uh, it should help many of you guys debug your code. So I will see you all in the future.